Hello friends, welcome back. This is Mehjubin and today I am going to explain the poem The Dead Knight. This poem was composed by John Maysfield who was an English poet and writer. I will recite the poem first. The cleanly rush of the mountain air and the mumbling grumbling humble bees are the only things that wander there. The pitiful bones are laid at ease. The grass has grown in his tangled hair and a rambling bamble binds his knees. To shrieve his soul from the pangs of hell, the only requiem bells that rang were the harebell and the heather bell. Hushed he is with the holy spell in the gentle hymn the wind sang and he lies quiet and sleeps well. He is bleached and blanched with the summer sun. The misty rain and cold dew have altered him from the kingly one that his lady loved and his men knew and dwindled him to a skeleton. The vetches have twined about his bones, the straggling ivy twists and creeps in his eye sockets, the nettle keeps vigil about him while he sleeps, over his body the wind moans. With a dreary tune throughout the day, in a chorus wistful airy thin, as the gulls cry, as the cry in the bay, the mournful word the seas say when tides are wandering out or in. Now I'll explain the poem line by line. The cleanly rush of the mountain air and the mumbling grumbling humble bees. So the poet is saying that the clean rush of the mountain air, the air in the mountain area and the mumbling grumbling humble bees. Mumbling means to murmur or to talk under the breath. So here the bees, the, uh, the bees which are moving around in that area, they are said to be mumbling or grumbling, that is complaining. It's a, um, uh, it's a plaintive sound and it appears as though the bees are complaining. Are the only things that wander there and the, the only things which move around in that remote desolate area are the bees and the air, the mountain air. The pitiful bones are laid at ease. The pitiful, that means the, uh, the, the bones of the dead knight, the bones of the dead man, the pitiful bones are laid at ease. They are laid to rest. The grass has grown in his tangled hair. And the skeleton, over the skeleton, especially in the hair area, in the head area, the grass has grown. The grass has grown over the skeleton of the dead knight and a rambling bramble binds his knees. And a rambling, that means a sprawling or spreading, bramble is a prick, prickly scrambling uh, shrub belonging to the rose family. So the bramble binds his knees, the knees of the dead knight, the skeleton, the knee area of the dead of the skeleton. These are bound by the bramble. So this is the condition in which the knight uh, can be seen. The knight is no more alive, he is dead and this is the condition in which the skeleton of the knight is found. To shrieve his soul from the pangs of hell and in order to relieve his soul from the torture uh, or from the pain of hell, from the tortures of hell, the only requiem bells that rang, requiem bells, these are the bells rung during a mass for the peace, uh, for the peace for the, uh, of the souls of the dead. The only requiem bells that rang were the hair bell and the header bell. So hair bell and the header bell are the only flowers that are visible in that remote, desolate, bleak, mountainous area where the skeleton of the dead, uh, dead knight lies and these are the uh, these are the only flowers that are seen the hair bell it is a blue colored bell flower uh, uh, bell flower which uh, which can be seen in the late summer season 
and the header bell is a European header plant with large purple red flowers. So this hair bell and the header bell are the only flowers which are seen there and hushed he is with the holy spell and the skeleton it lies quietly in a still way in the holy spell that is in the in the magical in the charm in the magic power of the uh, of the in the magic power of the moment the skeleton lies there in the gentle hymn the wind sang and the wind seems to sing a devotional song in order to mourn the death of this knight and uh, to ease his pain and also to relieve the uh, relieve the soul of the knight from uh, from suffering and he lies quiet and sleeps well and the skeleton it lies quietly and it sleeps well it is in a state of deep rest now the poet is talking about the color of the skeleton he is bleached the bo the bones of the skeleton uh, of the skeleton of this skeletal frame framework they are bleached he is bleached that means the bones have become white because of constant exposure to sunlight and blanched they have also become white uh, they have whitened he is bleached and blanched with the summer sun so the constant exposure to the sun have uh, changed the color of the bones and, and have made them pale the misty rain and cold dew and at the same time the misty rain and the cold dew drops have altered him from the kingly one the uh, the rain and the dew drops have also changed his form even further they have changed him altered him from the kingly one from the majestic um, looks that he had during his lifetime now that he is just a skeleton his looks have become very different that his lady loved and his men knew so the men that knew the knight and the beloved of this knight this the woman who loved him they knew a different version of this man but now that he is dead and gone from this world only his body remains only his skeleton framework remains he is totally a different um, he has taken a different shape and dwindled him to a skeleton and now he has been reduced dwindled means reduced to just a skeleton the vetches have twined about his bones so the vetches are it's a scrambling plant of the pea family which is cultivated as a uh, fodder crop the vetches have also twined they have entwined about his bones they have twisted around his bones the straggling ivy twists and creeps and even the ivy plant the uh, the straggling or the uh, stretching or spreading ivy plant it is spreading fast and it is twisting and creeping in his eye sockets in the eye sockets of the dead knight and the nettle that this is another prickly plant it keeps vigil about him while he sleeps and the nettle also seems to have worked its way around the uh, skeleton it seems to keep vigil vigil means to keep watch about the night while he is sleeping over his body the wind moans and as the skeleton is exposed to the uh, uh, to the atmosphere the wind seems to howl over the body and seems to mourn the demise of the man the demise of the night with a dreary tune throughout the day in a chorus wistful airy thin with a dreary tune that means with a dull depressing bleak or repetitive kind of a melancholy kind of tune throughout the day in a chorus um, in a chorus wistful wistful means sad or melancholic airy means ghostly thin as the gulls cry as the cry of the gull the gull is a seabird as the cry in the bay the mournful word the sea say the sea seem to utter a mournful word because the seas seas seem to be sad that the dead that the night is dead uh, and gone from the world and that this skeleton is lying outside in a neglected uh, way with nobody to pay respect to it the mournful word the sea say when the tides are wandering out or in so as the the as the tides of the seas while they are advancing and retre retreating towards the shore uh, and while they are advancing towards the shore and retreat retreating these tides they they create a kind of sound which seems to say that the tides of the 
sees our mourning, the demise of the night, because he is dead and also because he is lying in an isolated, his body is lying in an isolated condition with no human being to pay respect to him. And that is a very sad end to a glorious life. And, this is, and that is why the seas seem to be very sad and melancholic. So with this, I come to the end of today's class. See you again. Bye.